Hey guys, it's Mordecai, and welcome to Spazzy's Classroom. Yahoo! So today, I am going to be doing a live 2D tutorial about mouth rigging, and I hope that this will be helpful to all of you. So this tutorial is going to be about mouth rigging, and we're going to talk about mouth shapes, um, we're going to talk a little bit about reference for mouth, um, and we're going to be referencing some um, live 2D mouth sheets that other members of the live 2D community have put together and I will be linking all of the people's mouth sheets who I use in the description so that you can access them directly yourself and make sure to uh, credit them properly for referencing their mouth sheets, okay? In Spazzy's classroom, I hope that this is very helpful for you. Let me pop on uh, a lovely uh, apron because we're doing classwork today. We're not fighting anyone. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is review the starting points which means the drawing of your VTuber mouth in layers. I'm not going to be going over head X, Y and how to correct your mouth movements when you look to the side like this. So this is only going to be going over how to rig the mouth itself. Nothing else that could be associated with that, such as um, putting the mouth in the head warp deformers to make sure that everything moves together. That is not going to be covered in this video. This video is only specifically about the mouth. Okay, so let's get started looking at the drawing itself and then we will move on to uh, how to separate the layers and then finally we will get to the rigging. This video will have chapters so that you can skip to any part that you need specifically. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get a move on, shall we? Okay, so first thing in this video is this little speed paint. I just wanted to show you. It's not very long like my normal speed paints, but essentially I drew one of my OCs. His name is Stefano, and I did not split his um, art piece into layers, as you can see while I'm drawing it. I only split the mouth into layers because today we're only going to be speaking about the mouth. I'm not going to be rigging his head, uh, his hair, uh, anything about him. He's a static image that's just going to rig the mouth. And it might come off a little bit uncanny because he's not going to be moving with his mouth motions, but we're only going to be discussing the mouth rigging today. So that's why I didn't cut anything else into layers except for his nose, just because when you're rigging a mouth, you want the nose to be over top of it so that the mouthpiece doesn't cover the nose when you're manipulating it. Okay, so as you can see here, I have an image of Stefano up on the screen, and this is my OC. Um, he is a lovely gay man, and just for the sake of, I guess, showing you some art, here's a piece of him and his boyfriend, Zeke. They're very cute. Now, let's get to the point of this. So, uh, as you can see in this image, I actually have the layers um, shown on the side here. Um, you can also reference some other image. I know that the there's a VTuber named Kira Omori. She um, has a nice... Uh, character she uses called Bald Chan for her mouth rigging tutorial. And you can reference that for how to split layers a bit simpler. My OC has a bit of more complexities because he has mouth piercings and in my art style I also give a bottom lip to my characters as you can see. So um, we're going to be looking at the layers. So the first thing you can see here is the lip piercing. This is the piercing that is right here on the lip. Most of this stuff is inside the mouth, so you won't be able to see it until we get into Live 2D later. But the most important things that your model needs is an upper lip, a lower lip, an inner mouth, a tongue, their lower set of teeth, and their upper set of teeth. How you draw them is completely up to you, or how you get your commissioner to draw them because obviously everyone has different styles. But those are the most important pieces. Now for the upper lip and lower lip, personally I would recommend having a bit of the skin tone of your model um, attached to these pieces, so that way you have more room to cover up your inner mouth parts when you're rigging. And I will go more in depth into the detail of that when we're actually working on him later. Um, I personally have a lower lip accent, which you can see right here. This is not unnecessary, but for my art style, I do like to have this. 
He also has his lower lip, which obviously is this piece, and then the teeth are not visible, but they're inside the mouth. There's a tongue piercing that he personally has, and I have two of these, and I'll explain why in a moment. And then we have tongue out, which is for when you kind of stick your tongue out. I can't do that because my current model doesn't have that, and I will be explaining how to do that in this tutorial. I will be explaining how to do a tongue out um, toggle in this tutorial. Expression will not be like other people's because I don't have iPhone tracking, I use a webcam. Uh, next is the lowered set of teeth, which is also important for certain sounds you make with your teeth. Um, so that's there as well, and then I have another tongue piercing, and then the inner version of the tongue instead of the one that's stuck out. The inner version of the tongue has its own piercing, and this is why I have two piercings. I have one piercing that is manipulative and is going to be on top of this tongue, and then I have one piercing that is manipulative and uh, manipulatable and going to be on top of this one. I decided personally to make two separate ones. You could use just one piercing if your character has a mouth piercing. Um, you could use just one piercing for both of these, but I decided that I, it would be easier for me if I just had both of them. Um, there's a few more things I want to look at before we begin rigging, and then we will get to the rigging portion of the video. So you can make these sounds and look at how your mouth moves when you make them. I have a chart here, as you can see. This is just a chart that I found online. It has a Shutterstock symbol on it, um, because Shutterstock is a website that exists. And as you can see, there's a lot of different mouth shapes here. And now this isn't, um, this isn't the tried and true, you have to make the mouths look like this. Because that's not the truth. But this is a nice reference to help you see how your mouth might look when you make certain sounds. And these are a bit over-exaggerated because they are cartoon mouths, which I personally think is more interesting. As you can see, they have the tongue sort of in between the teeth for the th sound, which is true. Um, you can see the... They have a few, like, expressions here that are closed mouths, which are something that you could use if you'd like. You, they also have the oo or u sound, qua, qua sound, the v sound, the e, a-i-e sound, l, 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 o. It might be interesting to sit here and listening to me do that, but it does help to kind of, um like study these kinds of things. Now this is just one of the many uh, reference sheets you can find online. There's tons of them. Just go to Google, search up animation expression sheet, uh, animation lip sync sheet, animation mouth expression sheet, and you'll find plenty of references for yourself to use. But I just wanted to say that Cozy Chu themselves has said that this is their own uh, mouth comp. They added a 0 0.1 and a 0 1.2 line that are optional, which I personally will be including in my own tutorial. And they credited Kira Omori, Bunchata, and Celia uh, because they used their charts as a reference. So this is a standard live 2D mouth comp here. And I do not have the credit source for this, but I do believe it, it might be from the Live2D website, but I could be wrong. But essentially, this is the very bare bones of a mouth composition. You have neutral, you have sad, and you have happy. This is as simple as it could possibly get if you want your character to speak. Now, personally, I would not recommend this unless you're um, very much a, a beginning person and you don't mind your character not having much fluidity in their mouth range. Um, but if you just want to practice, this is a very good place to start. Next up is Cozy Chu's mouth chart, which I personally will be referencing when I work on my tutorial. So credit for this mouth chart goes completely to Cozy Chu and is not my mouth chart, I did not make this mouth chart, but I will be referencing it when I show you how to make mouth shapes and how to rig mouths. But it's also up to you, because maybe you have a character who can dislodge their jaw, or maybe you have a character that has a multi-jaw. Um, that's up to you, personally, of how you want to do that, and I do plan on making some tutorials in the future for more monstrous characters instead of just a humanoid. Um, because most people's models are just basic anime models, so I do want to make a tutorial in the future that is more of like a monster character moving their jaw and speaking, and we'll get to that someday. Next is Kiro Omori's chart. This one is... I've been using this one, personally. 
if of of all of them if you don't want too much work and if you don't want too little work i'd say this one is a great place to be so this table is made by kiro omori and you can see their channel i will link it in the description uh they've done the mouth expression um tutorial themselves with their own character and i really like their tutorial uh, chart that they've made. It's very uh, easy to understand. It has basic smiling expressions. It has your different mouth forms for different letters. It's very nice. So if you want something that's a bit simpler but still accessible and still uh, expressive, this one is really, really good. Okay, so now that we've went over all the different charts and the references that you can find online by other creators, I'm going to open up the Live 2D program, get everything imported, and then we will get started on how to do the mouth rigging. Here we are in Live 2D. First things first, I'm going to sort my layers and get them meshed. So first thing that I'm going to do um, is reposition my model to the center of the image. Next thing I'm going to do is grab all these parts and go to auto at the top where it says auto. We're going to click on deformation standard. Wait for that. Next we're going to go into certain particular parts. So bottom lip for me, top lip, and tongue out. I'm going to actually re-auto mesh these into a heavy mesh so that I have more manipulation. And then we're going to re- we're gonna reorganize these parts. So the face needs to be in the back. So the face is gonna go at 480 for me personally. How you organize your layers is completely up to you and depends on your own model and what parts and pieces you have. Uh, for me personally, I'm just doing what uh, works the best for me. So next is the bottom lip accent and the bottom lip, which are gonna be I think, I think they can stay at 500 actually. The top lip is going to go up to 502. Then the nose is going to, you know, I'll take the nose to 522 and I'll take the top lip to 513. Now, essentially what I'm trying to accomplish here is I'm trying to accomplish uh, what I'm trying to accomplish here is that I'm trying to accomplish getting things in a certain layer that will work for when I'm rigging. So as you can see, the tongue out is on layer 504, so it'll go under the top lip properly. And then I also want the teeth to be above it, so the teeth are going to go up to about 508. So that way when we have the tongue out in some of our expressions, we'll still have it under those. The lower teeth are at 500, the inner tongue is, and the mouth, those are all fine. This tongue piercing needs to go to layer 505 so that it can be seen on top. That looks pretty good in terms of ordering. You can always mess this around, but make sure that you mess around your ordering before you before you uh, begin rigging, uh, like before you begin putting points on your parameter meter, because if you don't, you're gonna have different, uh, you can change draw orders for each and every point, and you wanna be careful about that. So, now that we have this ready, I'm gonna make our warp deformers. Because this is a tutorial model and it doesn't have a lot going on, these warp deformers are gonna be very simplistic. I recommend watching a uh, full rigging tutorials if you want to see all of the hierarchy of the warp deformers. But for the purposes of mine, I'm going to do a warp deformer called face warp, which is just gonna hold everything inside of it. Then inside of there, there's going to be a mouth warp as a child of the selected object. Uh, so as a child of the face warp, that's where all of the mouth parts are going to go to. And then inside of mouth warp, we're going to do another child. And we're going to call that tongue warp out. And that is where the tongue out and the tongue out piercing are gonna go. 
the nose is just going to go into face warp to keep it simple for the tutorial. Now we have everything set up, I'm going to turn off the visibility of this warp so that we won't see uh, these two pieces while we're trying to work on the mouth. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do following the Cozy Chew chart is we're going to set up our parameters to go all the way to the 1.2, which is the extra spot on the chart that uh, Cozy Chu has. Um, so first thing we're going to do is edit the parameter and set the maximum to 1.2 on the mouth form. And I need you to listen very carefully to this part. Please make sure that your mouth form is above your mouth open because when we link these later, that is very, very important. It's very important. I actually did this tutorial yesterday. I recorded for about four hours doing this tutorial and then I realized that I had messed up the entire mouth form and I could not complete it and so I have to redo it today. So please make sure that your mouth form is above your mouth open before you start any work because when these two are linked together that is going to be very very important so now that we've set our range from negative 1 to 1.2 what we can do is select all of our inner mouth pierce pieces so you will click the first in your list and then hold shift and click the last one in your list and we're going to hit this three dots in a box symbol here and this will bring up the mouth Form, edit, now we're going to untoggle snap to rounded number and the first one we're going to set is at negative one, you just left click there and it will add the value. Then we're going to find 0 0.5, here it is, and then we're going to find 0, 0.0, this. then we're going to find 0 0.5, then we're going to find 1.0. And then 1.2 and you can see all your values here then you press ok when you're finished and now we have our value sheet so the first thing that we're gonna do is go to our top lip zoom in on that so you can see it better and up in the top of this window up in the top of this window there's an icon with two circles and a slanted line click on that and now we're in a drag tool mode so we're going to make a nice line across our mouth. So I'm going to start in the corner, and make points across the mouth. All you do to do this, by the way, is you just left click along the mouth. It will automatically link the points together. I like having a few uh, extra points, but if you don't like how it looks, you can control Z and redo it to make it suitable for what you want it to be like. And I think that looks pretty good to me. Then we're going to go to the bottom lip layer and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drag the points across. And there you go. So now we have our bottom and top lips ready to be used. And we will change back to this cursor icon at the top. And as you can see, you can now manipulate these pieces. And that's what we're going to use to make our mouth shapes. So. We're going to start with the mouth form. It's very important that you start with the mouth form and that you rig the mouth form first before connecting the two together. Okay, it's very important. So the first thing that we're going to do is start in our complete center, which is zero, zero. And in zero, zero is just our neutral expression. It's just the expression that you drew in your model in the first place. And now we're going to move over one space. And one space beyond 0.0, .0 is negative 0.5. So this is going to start to become a frown. So essentially all you're going to do for this is just go to your layers and just start manipulating how the expression looks. It is completely up to you how your expressions end up looking. You can make them look however you see fit to look. You can see that some of the white is poking through here from the teeth. And what we're going to do part... We're going to be able to solve this quite easily, so we're going to go to our inner mouth part. Go up to where it says ID. Copy that, control C. And then go to your tongue, your tongue that's in your mouth, not the tongue that's out. Press enter, press okay. 
And what that does in this clipping ID part here that you pasted it into is it will make sure that all the pieces that are inside the mouth are only able to be visible on this, this red part of the mouth. So essentially it makes it so that layers can't, um, can't go beyond a certain boundary. And it's very useful, very, very useful for, um, keeping things in. So as you can see that fixed our problem with the teeth because now that can't go beyond the mouth. So I'm going to click on the top lip now and I'm going to match the top lip with the bottom lip so that it's a closed semi frown. And whenever you want to check to see how it's looking, you go up to these two icons here and press them. They'll turn gray with an X or like a slash through them. You can see your model fully without anything over top of them getting in the way. I like how this is looking. So then I'm going to re-enable both of these and I'm going to continue to uh, make the other expressions. This is a very simple portion. Um, so I'm not going to continue to walk you through this. I think you can get the gist of it. Uh, again, if you're following a chart, just follow the shapes on the chart and you'll be working with mostly your bottom and top lip. If anything comes up that needs to be discussed, I will discuss it, but for now I'm going to go ahead and speed through the rest of this. Okay, so, I finished all my forms. The smile is a bit over-exaggerated, but that's okay because 1.2 is kind of like an exaggeration bit. Uh, 1.2 is just to add a little extra flair to expressions, but 1.0 is more likely where we're going to be freezing for most of the time. But now that I have all of my basic mouth form done, we're going to move on to mouth open, which is the much more complicated part. I'm going to walk you through the first few uh, expressions in mouth open and then I'm going to speed up the rest of them and hopefully that will help you get a nice process going so that you can learn and be able to do it for yourself so as always if you have questions you can leave them in the comments for me I'll try to explain as best as I can with the knowledge that I have personally so next up is we're going to be rigging for the mouth open now make sure when you start at the top of your list hold shift and click at the bottom make sure that you're leaving out your tongue warp out and these tongue pieces do not rig these to this mouth form or mouth open just yet don't do that because we're going to be working with those later and we don't want to we don't want to make it harder for ourselves so just leave this out for now um okay so now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the first one we're gonna grab our list of parts and then we're gonna do the three three dots inside a square on mouth open and as you can see, we're at 1.0 here, so we actually need to change this first. So go and right click it, press edit parameter, and make the maximum 1.2 instead of 1.0. There we go. And now we can click on the box with the dots. Uh, remove snapped to rounded number, and we're going to start with the first point, which is 0. Uh, and then we're going to do 0 0.1, which is somewhere in here right here 0 0.1 next is 0 0.3 here we go well, actually 0 0.1 is right here my 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 apologies this is 0, 0 0.01 this is 0 0.1 uh so use this point 0 0.3 next is 0 0.6 after that we have 1.0 go and 1.2 it's okay and you can see we have our chart. Now the next thing that we're going to do is reset this to the center. And then we're going to link these by pressing this icon in the corner. As you can see, uh, your bottom row should be smiling and frowning. If you move it along the x-axis, as I'm doing right now, and your character does not smile and frown, then that means that something is has been messed up and that mouth form is probably below mouth open. I would demonstrate this for you, but I do not want to ruin this tutorial a second time, as I did yesterday. But please make sure that mouth form is above mouth open before you do this. So since we're good here, we're ready to rig all of our points. You can see we have a lot of points. This is a very in-depth mouth rig, and it's going to have a lot more mouth shapes. Um, I'd, I'd give a general uh, saying here as that... 
you may see these very complex models with a lot of shapes and a lot of motion but i just want to remind you all that you do not need that to have a successful model as you can see with hold on a minute as you can see with my spazzy model um, he doesn't have a lot of complex mouth shapes, so sometimes some of the motions I do with my mouth he can't mimic, but it still, it still works perfectly acceptably. So you do not need this many mouth shapes in order to have a successful and expressive model, but this is just something you can do as like a little bit of extra for your model, and again, it's not, ne it's not a necessity or anything like that. But I do want to show you this as a more complex, in-depth tutorial to how far you can take your mouth. And again, this isn't even the- this isn't an end-all, be-all strategy. You can take your mouth forms much further than this. Um, you can do whatever you personally want with your mouth. And someday I do want to make a tutorial on how to do mouth shapes for more of like monstrous creatures or creatures that have um, more interesting jaw lines. Um, that will come eventually, but for now we're going to stick to this mouth chart and I'm gonna walk you through the first two or three uh, Mouth shapes in the frowning side of the chart and after that I'm gonna speed up the rest of the video and hopefully what I've taught you will give you the tools that you need to follow for the rest of them Make sure you have whatever mouth chart reference you are using handy and we will get started So we're going to right click this point right above the first one and that is where we're going to start rigging. So our first mouth shape is kind of an open, just like a hanging open mouth shape. And again, these mouth shapes can look however you want them to look. It's completely up to you. Uh, but having a guide can be useful uh, if you're a beginner. So I'm going to manipulate these lip parts to make the mouth shape that I personally want for this. And it's again it's completely up to you so you can decide what your mouth or your character is going to look like and you can see that a lot of the mouth is sticking out we're gonna do something about that here in a moment so don't worry too much about that I'm gonna teach you how to deal with that I think other than the mouth part sticking out that I like this mouth shape and I'm going to actually adjust the upper teeth so that they stick in just a little bit and you can see that it's sticking out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the inner mouth part here and we're going to press the B key and that brings up the brush tool you can also click this icon here at the top of the page um, you can hold B and left click and drag to change brush size but essentially what we're gonna do is left click and drag along these points which highlights them in red. Then you're going to hold control and you're going to move them inward by left click and dragging. And you can do this on both sides, as you can see there. And that hides the mouth so that way when we're moving we don't see that stuff sticking out of the sides. And this is a very simple way to work, a good work ethic for it as well. So I'm going to continue to go up this chart Next is a more wide open mouth shape, so uh, the best practice I like to do is go to your list of things in your mouth warp, click the top one, shift, click the bottom one, now you have them all selected. What we're going to do is left click and drag over them all, release, and then you'll see that they turn red. Now you have them selected. You're going to hit control shift C, that is control shift C on your keyboard. It's going to copy your recording. And you're going to move up to the next recording, the third one in the line, and press Control shift v on that recording. You're going to see that it pastes what, you, uh, what, you're, what you've uh, made. Okay, so. Really quickly, I'm actually going to go into my expression here and fix my lip because I forgot to adjust that. So that, that's my bad, that's just something I forgot to do. Uh, so just disregard this. That is my bad. Okay, so back to the tutorial. After we control shift, you can see that after we've pasted it, you can see it here pretty clearly. And this gives you a nice guide to work on the next, like, movement in the expression. So remember, you're thinking about this as if it's, it's animated, because that's what's gonna happen in the end. 
Um, and so this kind of gives you, um, like, you can reference your past expression that you've pasted to help make this next expression that you're making um, look nice and look smooth when it transitions from one expression to the next. Now for my character, because I have a bottom lip, lip accent, I have to make sure to move that for every single lip position because obviously as he talks his lips are going to move. You can also do chin movement as your, as your character talks because obviously your jaw would move as you speak. Um, I'm not doing that for this tutorial, this tutorial is only focusing on mouth shapes itself. But in a future tutorial, I will go into a little bit more depth about the chin movement. Um, Yoshino Art on YouTube has a tutorial about mouth movements where she speaks about uh, the chin movement. So you can check out her channel for that. And you should also check out Kiro Omori's channel because she has a uh, mouth rigging tutorial that's a little bit uh, simpler than this one is. So I'd recommend both of those. I'd recommend you watch more than one person's tutorial. Uh, because the more knowledge that you can gain, the better. Okay, so, we've done this one, and I'm gonna take you through one more before I speed up the rest. As you can see, that's looking really nice here. I really like that. And we're gonna go ahead and do one more expression together, and then I'm gonna speed up the rest and let you do the rest on your own. Obviously, you can reference this part of the video again if you need it while you're working, and ask any questions you have in the comments. So, we're gonna do the same thing. Click on the top of the list, shift, click the bottom of the list, left click, drag over it, control shift C, then go to the fourth point, control shift V, there you go, we've pasted it. Now next up is a little bit more of an open, kind of aggressive expression. Now on Stefano here, he's stuck in a perpetual state of adorableness, so he's not going to look very aggressive, but if your model is angry, this kind of expression with the mouth would be very useful, I think. So we're just going to go ahead and open everything up a little more, make everything a little bit more of like an aggressive, upset expression. And remember that you can move this at any time to check how your expression is going. Just make sure that after you're done looking, you right click the point you're working on so that it gets back to where you are. Move this down a little bit. And if this happens, if this mesh edit comes up, just press the red. Cross. Sometimes when you're using shortcuts, you might accidentally click something like that. Move the bottom lip down again. I'm gonna move the lip piercing down again. I'm just gonna check how that ends up looking. You can see that there's a little bit of strangeness going on, so we definitely want to fix that. Uh, you can see that my left part of my lip is like clipping here, so we want that to be fixed. Iron out. Uh, that looks a lot better. You can see that the teeth are looking a little bit too big and that's because I haven't moved them yet so we definitely want to move those up so that they're not so much in the way. And another thing that I've neglected to move throughout this expression has been actually the tongue parts. So I'm going to get those into the correct position in the mouth because those are definitely going to be present in this kind of expression and speech. In. And actually in this expression we would start to be able to see our bottom teeth come in a little bit. That's pretty good there. That looks pretty good actually. Okay, so we're at four expressions up and as I said, I'm going to go ahead and leave you for the next expression. I've given you the tools to shift your list, I've given you the left click and drag, and I've given you the control shift C to copy and paste. Um, making mouth expressions is as easy as just moving parts around until you like how they look. Then you can press these two buttons to check on how your mouth is moving and you can see if you like that. Everything is completely up to you. I'm going to do the rest of these expressions sped up, but you can always slow down the video to look at them more in depth if you need to. But I would highly recommend that you do some self-learning, because learning is about trial and error. That is something I say very wholeheartedly from what I've done in my life. I've done many different things, making models, making assets for Mario Kart, just a lot of stuff that I've had to trial and error my way through. So learning is trial and error. 
So I'm going to do the rest of these in a little sped up section and then after that we will talk about how to do the tongue out expression. Okay, so I have finished my rigging. You can see all my different mouth shapes here. Which actually I'm very proud of them. I really like how they turned out. So after you're done rigging all of your mouth shapes, we're gonna move on to the tongue out parameter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go set ourselves to zero, zero, and we're gonna make a new parameter. Click this button down here. We're gonna name this tongue out and the param is going to be param tongue out. Uh, minimum is going to be zero. Maximum is going to be one. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Anyways, we're back. Okay, so now that we have this parameter, we're going to assign these two pieces here to this. So press two dots. That's going to assign them. We're going to make them visible by pressing the little eye icons on the side. And the first thing that I'm going to do is go to the very uh, left side of this, right click this point, and go to where it says opacity and drag that to zero. That's going to make the opacity change. Now, we want this uh, animation for the tongue to come out to be usable when the mouth is wide open like this. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to re- uh, like reposition this to about right here where the tongue is in the mouth and I'm gonna have to do that for this one too so we're gonna use our same tactics shift uh, control shift C then we're gonna paste control shift V it's gonna show up like that and now you can see that it has a nice transition to being shown to not being shown um, if you want this to look a little better so it doesn't just disappear what you can do is, I have a tongue warp here, and I'm actually going to make put that on this as well. And my tongue warp is a little big, so I'm going to hold control and resize the warp over the tongue properly. Holding control makes it so it doesn't affect the image. Then I'm going to do edit level 2. And what we can do is, I'm actually going to go to... Oh my goodness, what the heck. I'm actually going to go ahead and paste that as well, so give me one second here. There we go. Fixed it up. Uh, you should really make sure your box is the right size before you start rigging, like don't do what I just did. So I'm going to go to 0 0.9 and I'm going to add a point here on the tongue warp. And I'm also going to add a point here on the warps for the piercing and the tongue out, or the pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to like just scrunch it in and make the opacity 100 still. So the tongue looks like it's like slowly, it like goes in. You can see it's it's being a little weird. It's like turning really small and that's a little strange. Like what, why that's uh, doing that is simply because of the warp and how I changed it afterwards. So... Maybe I would recommend uh, to not, like I said, don't don't touch the warp after you start recording. I would recommend to do it beforehand. That was my my mistake there. So I'm actually gonna control V. See if I can fix this up. Shift C, control shift V. Okay, I fixed it up. So. Essentially, this is gonna make the tongue like go in before it disappears and that's as simple as it needs to be You can make this more detailed uh, if you want to but I think that for our purposes this will work Okay, and when the mouth is like this uh, we can obviously we're gonna re-rig it so that it looks proper But we have those finished next what I'm gonna do is take the tongue warp out here, and I'm actually going to 
put a green dot on all of our existing points in our mouth form. So you just right click each point and then press the plus green dot icon that's to the right of the parameters. And then we're going to relink those and we're going to have a separate form of mouth shapes whenever the tongue is out. So I am going to reposition these up in here and then I'm going to press C and press V to post them to all the different expressions. And then for these other ones, what I can do is manipulate it so that it fits uh, from the mouth. And just kind of keep doing that for each one. You pull these little points here and you can make it so that it fits uh, each part of your expression, how you need it to look. Obviously, like, you want your tongue out to be underneath of your top teeth so that it looks like it's coming out of the mouth properly. For this one here, I have to make sure to cover the other tongue because obviously this character only has one tongue. If your character has two tongues, then, you know, you can edit your character according to however what you need. Again, this is why I say that making models and tutorials is very subjective. It can be very useful, but at the same time, everybody's model is going to be different. So you definitely want to keep that in mind when you're working on a model, that your model might be different than the one that the tutorial is showing. So do what's best for you. Once you learn the basic skills, it's really easy to um, apply them to other things into your own model work. That's why I wanted to keep this tutorial um, like in depth in terms of how much mouth shape there is, but also very easily uh, usable for other situations and such like that. Just finish up these tongue shapes here. Then you can see that now we have a tongue version of the mouth. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, again, this isn't a super in-depth tutorial about tongue out because I don't personally use it, but I thought I would include it in the mouth shapes in case anybody's interested in this. Um, next, I'm going to take the model into my PRPR Live, which is the program I personally use. And I'm going to show you... Uh, how it looks in PRPR Live. Okay, so here is the model being used in PRPR Live. Uh, you can see that the mouse shapes aren't super important in PRPR Live because, like, it it does detect them, but it doesn't detect them as much as it probably would in uh, VTube Studio. But I don't use VTube Studio because I like that PRPR Live lets you have more than one expression on at once. Whereas, as far as I know from people, VTube Studio doesn't let you do that. Um, but here is how it works. And when I stick my tongue out, uh, you can see that that works. Uh, 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 can't really talk like that. Okay, so here we are in PRPR Live. And I'm going to go into the face capture settings and down to advanced configuration. PRPR Live is a lot more simplistic than VTube Studio, and I can admit to that. But again, I personally use it because I like that it has the ability to have more expressions on at once, rather than only just one at a time. Um, so that's the that's one of the personal reasons I use it, and I've noticed that PRPR Live reacts better to my models than VTube Studio does. Uh, again, it's all up to personal taste. You use whichever program you want. Um, but for Peer Peer Live, they have a tongue tracker, so you can go like this, and have it be, like, a tracked thing. But, if you want your tongue out for, like, uh, expressions instead of having it tracked, you would press X on this, and go- Then we're going to go into here, where it says add expression. I'm gonna name the expression tongue out, expression tongue out, you can name it whatever you want. After the expression is added, you're going to go to the parameter, set that to 1, then file, export model settings into the folder where your model is located, press yes to everything, 
and now it has that so the model settings and we can add the expression tongue out and you can toggle this I'll press a to toggle it so now I can toggle this like this so you can have it on all the time if you wanted to I don't really I wouldn't really want that personally but if you wanted it to be a toggle instead of something that you can do with your web camera you can do this and you can toggle to put that away again there's two different options for it personally if I were to ever use this which it's not something I really want for my models but if I were to ever use this I'd probably do uh, it this way uh, just so that I can have more control over it so yeah so that is the tutorial for mouth shapes and for um, making, uh, like, the tongue out parameters, which, again, I don't use those, so I was a little hesitant to add them in this video, but I did know how to make them, so I decided to add them anyways, but thank you guys so much for watching, I hope this was helpful, um, I know it's not a perfect tutorial, but again, this is just one of the many tutorials available to you online, so please, I, I recommend checking out people like Yoshino Art, Akira Omori, um, and, of course, check out the wonderful... Uh, Cozy Chu that made the mouth chart that I followed for this video. So just check out these people because uh, their tutorials could give you a lot more information. And the more tutorials that you watch, the better that you learn. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and have a wonderful day. Stay groovy. Bye bye. <laughs>